So, you know, going beyond this, I want to talk about some drive-by tips. So this might be part two of the video. I don't know how I'm going to break it up, but essentially I want to help you understand a little bit more about some other strategies you can use because there's lots of different strategies and they all work well for different people. If you run into a food that is really hard to resist eating just a little bit of, I would temporarily give yourself permission to avoid that food for a little while. Okay. And I'll give you two, two of mine are, I already talked about chips and salsa and ice cream. All right. I rarely ever eat ice cream, probably because I'm actually lactose intolerant and I'm not willing to admit it, but also because if I have even a spoonful, it's really hard to control how much I eat. And that's a personal thing with me. You might not have that problem, but if you do, it can be good. It can be empowering to restrict the, that food completely from your nutrition simply because it's just so hard to avoid overeating that food. And I found that personally, this works really well for me. Now I'm not a psychologist and I'm not a, a food addiction specialist. I just know what I've done to help myself make this work a lot better. And that is one of the strategies that I use. All right, now we're going to go over a couple of drive by tips that I just want to mention in case you are looking for some other ways to make overeating on the weekend a lot easier to avoid doing. So the very first one is practice some level of intermittent fasting. And this can be specific to the weekends or it can be during the week, whatever you think it works best. But what that allows you to do is if you practice intermittent fasting and you don't have any calories until maybe lunch, you can have a really solid, healthy, nutritious meal. And then later on, when you go out to eat with your friends or go drinking with your friends, you have a larger calorie allotment to afford it, you know, eating a higher calorie meal. I'm not saying you should go out and just like binge eat because it's okay now because you have enough calories. But what I am saying is if you do have a meal that has more calories than you're really aware of, you'll be on the safer side of trying to stay in a deficit or at least just maintaining the amount of calories that you could eat just to keep your weight the same. Because the biggest problem that I see my clients have is that they way overeat on the weekends, like sometimes a thousand calories more than they would normally eat during the week. And that might not seem like a big deal maybe once a week, but over time, that is how you accumulate excess body fat, just little moments like that. And studies have even shown that when people overeat and they get fat over the years, it's usually those weekends where they binge or they have way more calories than they typically would normally have to keep their weight the same. All right, so another drive-by tip is making sure that your meals that you have, especially on the weekend, you should be doing this all the time, but especially on the weekend, are protein rich. So they have a lot of good quality protein, in them, usually 20 to 30 grams at the very least. And the reason for that is because if you're going to have a meal that's going to keep you satiated, protein is one of the best foods for doing that. All right. The same works for vegetables because vegetables have a lot of fiber in them, especially the really high fiber type vegetables. Those can help keep you full longer so that when you go out to an event when you're eating, or even if you're just at home, because a lot of us will eat when we're bored and eating when you're bored is a very common thing. Eating when you're bored is typically because you're actually hungry. So if you have a high fiber and high protein rich meal, eating when you're bored becomes a lot harder to do. So your likelihood of overeating goes down. Another big drive-by tip is eating when you're stressed out. Now this can happen at any time. It doesn't have to happen just on the weekend, but if you're stressed out at work or you're stressed out during the day, or maybe you got some bad news, a very natural reaction for our body is trying to lower cortisol. Cortisol is the hormone that shoots off when you're stressed out. And a natural suppressant of cortisol is insulin. Well, what gets secreted when you eat? Insulin does. So your body naturally knows that in order to make you feel better, all it has to do is get you to want to eat something that'll lower that cortisol level down and that stress will go away. Because believe it or not, your body's actually on your side. It doesn't want to be stressed out. The problem is, is that your body doesn't know whether you're being chased by a lion and you're going to die, or if you just heard some bad news or watched a stressful movie or something stressful on the news. So a lot of times it can feel like you're hungry when you're stressed out, but you're really not hungry. You're just stressed. And, and reducing stress through food is actually a very common uh, kind of gateway to get that to go down. So if you're stressed out and you're starting to feel hungry before you put something in your mouth, this is what I recommend. Ask yourself three very important questions. When is the last time I ate? Okay, that's the first question I ask yourself. If, if it was somewhat recently, like within two hours, you really don't need food. All right. There's a, there's a kind of a big idea around that, that you should, you know, you can have snacks or all these things. And what I like to tell my clients is if you're having high quality, good protein, rich and fiber rich meals, you don't need snacks, right? You should be able to go from meal to meal without having a snack. Now I'm not a, 
an absolutist, so I don't want to say that it's never okay to have a snack, but you want to try to shoot to, to reduce the amount of snacks that you have. So anyway, when you're stressed out, ask yourself, when's the last time that I ate? If it was somewhat recently, then you don't need food, all right? Tip number two is, am I actually hungry? Or am I just stressed out, which is making me feel the same way as if I was hungry? That's the second question. And then ask yourself, do I need food, all right? And if you're asking yourself that question and you, and you start to realize I don't need food, I'm not actually hungry and I'm stressed out, then it's best to move on and find another way to reduce that stress. Sometimes that's going outside for a walk or finding a, a way to escape whatever is stressing you out to your best ability and finding a way to kind of blow off steam a different way. Using food as a band-aid for stress is never the answer. All right, so my next tip is if you are going to have seconds at a meal, do your best to pile on the vegetables and the protein. And the reason for that is one, they're usually a, a more high volume, low calorie food, vegetables and protein are. And two, you're gonna get full sooner from those foods. So like as an example, what I typically do is if I'm at dinner and I have my first serving of dinner, I'll wait about 10 to 15 minutes after. And if I'm actually still hungry, I'll go get a second helping, but I'll just focus on having the protein and the vegetables. And usually, even no matter what I put on my plate, I'll only be able to eat like a quarter to half of what I actually put on my plate for seconds. And then I put the rest away in a Tupperware and I eat that at a different time. So if you are going to have seconds, instead of loading up on the carb rich foods, which can be really easy to overeat, fill up on the protein and the vegetables. All right, the last drive-by tip that I have is reduce snacking. I already sort of talked about this earlier, but the more you can reduce snacking, the better. And here's why. It's not that I have anything against snacking or that snacking is like somehow more fattening, but a lot of times, unless you're really managing the snacks that you're having, those calories can add up. And because they're in small amounts, if you're snacking a lot or if you're eating throughout the entire day, those calories can add up. And pretty soon you've snacked a thousand calories into your day instead of just simply having uh, a more robust and kind of calorie dense, or not calorie dense, but nutrient dense meal. So focus on nutrient dense meals and your snacking will naturally reduce. Now, again, if you do have a snack, have that same mindfulness in. I would highly recommend having more high volume, low calorie foods, right? Um, and again, I'll put that list down below of, of some of the most popular or the, the, the best, so to speak, high volume, low calorie foods. And if you are gonna snack, snack on foods that are in that list because your likelihood of overeating them are dramatically lower. All right, so that's my video today. I hope you learned some stuff. I hope you take some of these strategies and, and actually apply them because the more you apply these strategies, the easier it'll be to stop overeating on the weekend. As always, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, make sure to put them down in the comment section below. And don't forget to tell me your kind of trigger foods. I wanna know if anyone else has this chips and salsa problem that I have. And then if you like this video and you know other people that struggle with overeating on the weekend, make sure you share this with them, all right? This is a very easy video to watch and it can be a really easy video to start getting some of these practices in your actual daily life. And before we leave, if you don't mind, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you wanna see more videos from me, make sure to hit subscribe. And then if you hit that little bell, it'll also let you know when new videos come out. All right, I know this video is really long, so thanks a ton for watching and I will see you in a future video.